So you guys have been asking me my thoughts on the Galaxy S8 Plus, and it's been over two months now since I've been using this phone. And in typical Armando fashion, I'm not gonna talk about specs or anything like that. I wanna talk about real world usage, what I like about the phone, what I don't like about the phone. Now, little disclaimer, I love this phone. And naturally, because I'm gonna say nice things about this phone, the trolls are gonna come out and automatically they're gonna say, oh, Armando, you're sponsored by Samsung, you're getting paid. So I brought my receipt to show you guys that I paid for this phone full price. Uh, 64 gigabyte model, this is $849.99. My name is up there so you guys can see Armando Ferreira paid for this. Yes, this, pay, this phone was paid in full price by me. Contrary to what most people believe, I actually pay for 90% of my phones. And if I do get a phone for free from a company, go back and check, I always, always tell Thank you XYZ company for sending this phone out for me to check out. So a little disclaimer, I wanna put that out there just in case you know the trolls don't know that. So with that finally out of the way, let's talk about the things I like about the Galaxy S8 Plus, starting off with the design. This design is by far my favorite from any smartphone period. That is my opinion. I love this phone. I love the design. This is not the first time we've seen that curved edge before. This is actually more of a second generation model. And I think they've done a great job. It's a lot easier to hold. It's a lot more comfortable to hold. And if you get the Galaxy S8, not the Plus model, that's actually really nice to hold. I actually recommend that over the Galaxy S8 Plus if you have smaller hands. For me, I have a little bit larger hands and I prefer the larger version because I'm gonna get a 6.2 inch display and I'm also gonna get 3,500 milliamp battery, which is actually phenomenal. We'll talk about battery life a little bit later. Another thing I like about this phone is just the infinity display. It looks gorgeous. I mean, this phone looks phenomenal and we're gonna talk about all of that later, but I wanna focus more on the things on the outer part. Let's talk about things I don't like about this phone. We'll start off with the power button. Now, typically the way I hold my phone is like this. I'm right-handed, just a little FYI. Now the power button is just too tall, it's just on the upper side. I have to actually scoot the phone down in order to you know, hit the power button. Now on the opposite side, you have the volume rockers. And what I need to do this, or what I need to do here is, and I'll show you guys, I'll scoot the phone down. It's just very uncomfortable to hold. But check this out, if I move the phone over to my left hand, now look how comfortable the power button is. And then if I wanna go ahead and use the volume keys, I'm gonna go ahead and just comfortably use this. What this tells me is that this phone is actually made for people with left hand. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't have anything against left-handed people. My wife is left-handed, but that is something that I wanna let you guys know that if you're left-handed, you actually might enjoy this a little bit more than somebody who's using it with the right hand. At least that's what I think because I don't like it. The other thing I don't like about this phone is this little button down here that I'm sure you've heard of is called Bigsby. I do not like Bigsby at all. It is a pain, it is annoying. I don't even know why it exists. Well, I do know why it exists, but I don't know why Samsung does not allow us to reprogram this button. I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. They should allow us to basically create a shortcut. I understand there's applications that allow you to do that and you can go ahead and you know download them, but I don't like to use those apps because they drain battery life. This is something that Samsung should just you know do out of the box. Also with Bigsby, it confuses me sometimes with the volume key. Sometimes when I try to use it, I think that this is the volume down key and it's not, it's just a pain. Now, the other thing I don't like about the design of this phone is the fingerprint reader location. Let me clarify, not that it's located on the rear of the phone, that it's actually located right next to the camera. I love the fact that Samsung actually moved the finger fingerprint reader from the front and moved it to the back. I like that. I like that. Perfect, thank you Samsung for that. But don't put it right next to the camera. It's just annoying, I don't use it. Luckily though, face unlock works fantastic and I can just go ahead and push right here and look at this, it's gonna work automatically. I almost feel like this is actually a fingerprint reader even though it's not because it works that great. Now finally, the last thing I'm not a huge fan of is just how slippery this phone is. I actually dropped it already once. You're definitely gonna wanna protect this. So if you add something like a case, and just to show you the size, even with a case on, it's still very manageable to hold, still very comfortable you know, to hold in the hand. Uh, obviously a case is going to protect the phone a lot, but I'm personally not a fan of cases. To me, it's like adding a bra to a Ferrari. 
So that's something that's not cool. So for me, what I like to do is add something like a skin. So check this out. This adds a lot of grip, a lot more comfortable to hold in the hand. They come in different colors, different variations. This one here is the Black Dragon Skin from Dbrand. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I'll leave a link down below so you guys can go ahead and check them out. Let's go ahead and move back to the front side and admire this awesome display. Samsung is amongst the best when it comes to making displays and this is definitely in the top three and you can definitely appreciate this phone. I mean, it just looks, you have to really see it in person. It looks awesome. Now, I'm personally more of a fan of IPS displays just because they're more true to life, especially like the iPhone. I like that color representation more than a Super AMOLED because they're very saturated. However, Samsung has came up with a screen mode which allows you, allows you to change like different settings. So for example, if I move it over to AMOLED photo and I put this side by side with my iPhone 7 Plus, it literally looks identical, which is something I really like. Now, if you go back to adaptive display, you can go ahead and even change like the different color temperatures. So if you want cool or warm, so that's obviously nice. Now, one thing about this display is that it has a very funky resolution. So whenever you're like playing apps or playing games or loading up apps or even watching movies, you'll have to scale them uh, depending on the type of app that you're watching or type of movie that you're looking at, uh, which it does a really good job. I'm not complaining about that, but just keep that in mind because sometimes when you're watching a movie, it has little black bars on the side. And if you want to get rid of that, you can obviously, you know, crop in. It does crop the image a little bit, but it looks great. I mean, it does take advantage of that screen, you know, real estate. Now, another thing I like about uh, the panel is the always on display. This right here looks great. I like the fact that it shows you the time. You don't obviously have to power on the whole entire phone to look at the time. It gives you the date. It gives you the battery percentage. It shows you the notifications. It even tells you where the notification is coming from. So that's really, really convenient. And because it uses an AMOLED display, it saves a lot of battery life. And this is one thing you're gonna wanna leave on. You're not gonna wanna you know, turn this off because it's not. it doesn't really drain the battery too much. Now, speaking of battery, life. This is one of the phones that I can honestly be comfortable with taking with me on a long trip and know that I don't have to recharge. I can pretty much use this phone heavily and I can get through the whole entire day. In fact, this is the only Android phone that will give the iPhone 7 Plus a run for its money. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The iPhone 7 Plus has phenomenal battery life. This phone beats it. And this is the phone I will carry with me every single time whenever I go on a long trip. So just a little FYI. Now at this price point, it's expected to have a USB Type-C port and it does, and that's great. And next to that is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and also a speaker. I wish they would have done front facing speakers. They didn't or even some stereo speakers would have been nice. They didn't, and I would expect that at this price point, but again, they didn't. On top of that, we have a little uh, SIM removal, but you can also add an SD card for expandable storage. This is also water resistant. Two of those things I really don't care about too much, but I've always said this, it's always convenient to have and not need it than to need it and not have it at all. So for what it's worth, it's there, and I guess that's good. Uh, wireless charging is supported on this phone. I like that because I have a ton of wireless chargers. I've been to places and locations that support wireless charging, different tables, you know, local Starbucks has one too. So that's always, you know, very nice and convenient. Now, before we jump onto the software side, let's talk about the last thing, which is the camera. This camera takes outstanding pictures. It's consistent like the iPhone. You know, no matter what uh, type of picture I've taken, I have yet to say, ooh, that was terrible or that's unusable. Not the case. Like I said earlier, I've been using this now for almost two and a half months and I've taken over a thousand pictures, including video, and I've yet to see a terrible picture. It's very consistent. Basically, there's phones out there that you take a picture and it's either a hit or miss, not with this phone. I can guarantee that if I take a picture, it's usable and it's gonna look good. One complaint, if you want to call it that, is they played it very safe. Like, I wish they would have done something like LG with a dual camera system. Even Apple, who typically is boring and they're like the last company to do things, you know, they have a dual camera system. They have that telephoto. I wish Samsung would have done that, whether it be a wide angle lens, which I personally prefer, or even something like a telephoto lens. They didn't do that. They played it very safe. And you know what? I'm okay with that because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But having a dual camera system is so nice because you get more interesting shots. I wish they would have done something like that. But I do like this, the fact that they made it flush. 
So that's nice because if you place it on a table, it doesn't have a little wobble or anything like that. So kudos to Samsung and I'm okay with the phone being a little bit thicker for that. Now on the software side, I hate TouchWiz. I don't like it, but it's gotten a lot and I mean a lot better. As I said earlier, I've been using this phone for two and a half months. It's still very snappy, very smooth. No matter what you know application I'm using, no matter how many apps I'm using, it's just, it runs like a champ. It's phenomenal. When it comes to RAM management though, Samsung is terrible at that. They still have that aggressive RAM management, which I do not like. So if I have a whole bunch of different applications loaded and let's say I go back to, you know, a specific app, it will restart. I hate that. I hate that it does that. You know, if I go back to this app, you know, it'll start back from scratch. I don't like that. So that's something that Samsung is notorious for. And of course, TouchWiz, it's not that I don't like you know, the additional features. I love the additional features, like the screenshot feature where it scrolls down, you know, those things like that, or even things like this, like the edge display, like having all these different apps, like, you know, and being able to modify, like enhancing Android to make it better, excellent. But adding stupid applications, you know, that are gonna slow the phone down that I don't need and I cannot download, or excuse me, I cannot delete, is something I do not like. You know, so after using this phone now for over two months, this is the best Android phone for me. Hands down, it's the best Android phone that I'd recommend today. Uh, mainly because it has all of the bells and whistles for the most part that I'm looking for. It checks mainly all of those, you know, those marks. Granted, it's missing some features and I've said this before, no phone is perfect out there, but this has a lot of the features that I'm looking for in a phone. So, are there better phones out there for your money? Absolutely. And this is gonna fall into those, the law of diminishing returns. Just because this phone costs $500 more compared to other phones, doesn't mean you're gonna get $500 more worth of features. But if you want mostly all of the bells and whistles and everything that Android has, has to offer, this is the phone to get. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Galaxy S8 Plus. If you guys have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Also follow me on social networks at Mondobytes, particularly Snapchat, Instagram stories if you guys like behind the scenes. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.